What's it like? No, but originally, like your parents, where they're from. Africa, right? Here's the thing. I've been here five years. My wife, seven, eight. We've been working. We've been paying our taxes. We cheer for England in the World Cup. So when the government told us to register, told us to download this app and pay to register, it hurt. This is our home. We felt unwelcome. It's like if they said to you, go back to Africa. Imagine if they told you, no, no, you're not a real Brit. Go back to Africa. That's what it's like. I mean, it's, well, you know, of course you do. You understand. You can understand it in a way the English don't. After the digestive, he gets going. She understood the anger of a man who himself understood in his flesh and bones and blood and skin that he was meant to be at the head of a great, hulking giant upon whom the sun never set. Because it was night now, and he was drunk. He felt very small, perhaps only a mouth. A lip or a tooth or a rough, inflamed bud on a dry white tongue, slick with phlegm at the back, near the throat. The throat of a man with a sagging gut and thinning hair cropped short. So, when that mouth opened up and coughed its vitriol at her, making some at the table a little uncomfortable, she understood the source of its anger, despite being the target. She waited for the buzz of her phone to excuse her, and, in the meantime, quietly, politely, she understood him. Assembly. It's a story. There are challenges. There's hard work, pulling up laces, rolling up shirt sleeves, and forcing yourself. Up. Overcoming, transcending, etc. You've heard it before. It's not my life but it's illuminated two metres tall behind me, and I'm speaking it into the soft, malleable faces tilted forwards on uniformed shoulders. I recite my old lines like new secrets. Click to the next slide. Giant, diverse, smiling faces in grey suits point at charts, shake hands and wave behind me. The projector whirs and their smiles morph into the bank's roaring logo. Time to wrap up. I look out around the rows of schoolgirls, thank them for listening before taking questions. One asks if I live in a mansion. It was a hit, the programme coordinator tells me, and the head teacher nods a frazzled bob of greying hair. Her tense lips part, flashing coffee-yellow teeth. We're walking round and down a small back stairway, and I'm gagging on the warm air, that boiled veg school smell. The head teacher thanks me for coming, says the girls were all inspired. Shrieks. Laughter and a booming, melodic chatter echo around us as the students splash out of the assembly hall and into concrete corridors. Simply inspirational, she says. Back at the office, Lou's not in yet. He rarely shows up before eleven. As if each morning, fresh mediocrity slides out of the ocean, slimes its way over mossy rocks and sand, then sprouts skittering appendages that stretch and morph and twist into limbs as it forges on inland until finally, fully formed, Lou strolls into the lobby on two flat feet in shined shoes. Shining, tapping, waiting for the lift to our floor, nodding to the beat's buds in his ears. He's never roped into all this. I do these talks, schools and universities, women's panels, recruiting fairs, every few weeks. It's an expectation of the job, the diversity must be seen. How many women and girls have I lied to? How many have seen my grinning face advocating for this or that firm or this industry or that university, this life? Such questions aren't constructive. I need to catch up on the morning's lost hours. For much of my own childhood, I lived next to a cemetery. Through the front windows, I'd watch funeral processions snake along the road, Black horses followed by black hearses, followed by regular cars in different colours. Sometimes a man marched in front with a top hat and cane. Then the people, getting out of the cars and the hearses and gathering themselves, carrying wreaths, carrying hats. Carrying coffins, too, I guess. I don't remember seeing that. They'd gather by the mounds of fresh-dug dirt and wait around, wreaths piled neat beside them, or they'd just stand there holding flowers, or holding each other little faraway creatures clinging together for comfort.